Now, digital strip searching is a term being used to describe police stopping individuals at airports, international train stations, and at a border, and so on, to search basically your digital belongings, such as laptops, mobile phones. And Sarah's here to tell us more about the story, Sarah. Yeah, it's uh, actually, I have to admit, it's something I hadn't heard of until this morning. That's because International Director of CAGE, which is a British-based human rights group, is likely to be charged on Wednesday for refusing to disclose his mobile and laptop passwords to the UK police. Now... This incident happened last November at Heathrow Airport. Mohammed Rabbani is a British citizen, but says he's been detained at least 20 times in the last decade upon entering the UK. And now his organisation, CAGE, is challenging the British anti-terrorism law, which provides broad search websites. CAGE campaigns on issues such as torture, discrimination and wrongful imprisonment and is planning to fight the issue as a right to privacy case. Now, let's hear more from the man himself who's at the centre of all this. Mohammed Rabbani is live for us in London. Mohammed, why did you refuse to um, hand over your passwords to the police if you've got nothing to hide? Thanks, Sarah, for inviting me to speak. The reason is very simple. I felt that I couldn't hand over the passwords until I had assurances that I could get consent from a particular client whose case that we're actually gathering evidence on is a victim of torture. And because I was unable to get um, assurances to obtain consent, I was unable to hand over my passwords. So where's this campaign uh, going? How further are you going with this? Well, it's actually um, the power that I was stopped under has been in operation for 17 years. I'm not unique or alone in this experience. It's, it actually affects 50,000, on average, 50,000 people each year. Uh, but to give you a, a proportion of it, out of those 50,000 people who are stopped and held each year, five people last year were arrested. So it's understandable that police at borders have a job to do to protect national security. But what we're saying is that there's clear overreach here. And um, if it was about protecting borders and stopping terrorists from coming inside, then there should be a much higher number of people being arrested. The fact that out of the five, uh, I was one of them, so that leaves four people. And out of those four people, if I'm not mistaken, only two were charged with an offence. So it's clearly disproportionate. And it needs to be, we're trying to draw attention to this and also challenge it legally. Well, thanks, Mohammed, for taking the time to join us. And here's an infographic from an art article from the Middle East Eye, which explains Schedule 7. And uh, that's, of course, the legislation. And a few figures, just if I scroll here, you'll have more information just there. And um, also, if you want to read the law itself, then you can find it on the British government's website, including updates to the legislation. And here is where you'll find CAGE's campaign. You can either go to their Facebook page or they've actually created a website for it, especially with more details. It's called Pass with Privacy. And also Cage has been tweeting about it. These are some of the hashtags that are being used. Right to privacy, fly, don't uh, spy. And uh, there's been, of course, a few responses to this. A uh, AZ says, with a password, you can enter into a person's uh, life. That's the wrong link. Sorry about that one. But uh, everything is digitized these days, sometimes going back years and years. And and here are some more thoughts we wanted to share with you from the streets of London. I would feel uncomfortable with it, but if it's for the safety, I don't see anything wrong with that. So, yeah, and I don't really, personally, I don't really put weird stuff in my computer, laptop, or so I'll be fine if it were me. I think we're a different country from America, uh, and I think one of the things that makes this country great is our freedom fact that we um, speak openly and freely and, and people should experience that when they come here. I don't think it's needed for us to give them our password for our phones or our photos and nothing because think about that. In this generation that we live in, the phone is people's life. Every detail is in there, your location, what, what you buy, what you eat, everything. I mean right now even the government can look into your phone, right? And they can see that they can take a picture without even knowing.